or are you just going to pull them over? So the way it works is that any member of the commission or the subcommittee, including Tawana and William, are given panelist permissions. Okay. Um, and then if the public decides to join, then they're given attendee status okay. or whatever it's called. Yep. Okay, this will be interesting. This will be my first hiring meeting. And then I want to ask me to talk about some stuff. So we'll see how it goes. Sounds good. This is y'all's first meeting? Second. Okay. And I'm sorry, I didn't look at your presentation yet. I'm guessing it's answering some questions that they had on data. Okay. Is that something you want me to share and, and move forward? Would that be helpful for you? Or how do you, how, how is that normally managed? Yeah, so you should, well, so I'm filling in for Julia <laughs> and she's pretty flexible just in terms of, you know, if the presenter wants to control their slides or, um, you know, now that I'm, now that we're talking about it, it probably makes more sense for you to control the slides so you can just go at whatever pace um, feels good for okay. you. I'm currently getting the air host disabled participation sharing. Okay. Hmm. How does she do this? You did not talk about this. Hmm. Oh, okay. Who can share all panelists? Who can start sharing when someone else is sharing? I guess I'll keep that as only host. Okay. Um, can you test that out again? Yep. Awesome. Can you see my screen? Okay. Mm -hmm.
Hey there, can you hear me okay? Can you hear us? We can. So Tawana and William, I am the uh, Jalissa for tonight, as well as Leslie. And so um, before we get started, uh, well, when you're ready to start, let me know, and then I'll make the announcement around Facebook Live. Okay. okay. Hey, William, how are you? Doing well, and you? I'm good. I'm trying to figure out how to pull up the agenda from here. Oh, do we, do we, okay, so we got the um, presentation? I think. Yeah, I've, I've got the presentation pulled up to share. Um, I can go okay. ahead and drive that. Um, did you want me to share the, I've just pulled up the agenda from the city's website. Um, did you want me to share that as well? What we po what we posted? I think just the power. I think just pull up the PowerPoint. Just have it on the. Um, you can either have it on the first page or put it on the team norms. It's just kind of there as a visual, and then the side after that is the uh, agenda. So if you want to go to the second page, at least when people join, they'll see the team norms, etc. Up to you, either the first page or that. Okay, let me. It's probably a good best practice to keep that as a constant in the presentations. Okay. Not that we have any issues, but just kind of a good reminder, you know? Yep. Because we're all awesome. trying to figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that, uh, can you see it? Can you see my screen and everything? Yes, perfectly. And Minnie, I know we chatted, so just, um, I think where you think appropriate to chime in, um, or I may just kind of nudge you, but um, yeah. That sounds good. Um, were you guys gonna do like attendance and confirming the, the last minute's notes before I go to the agenda slide we have in the presentation? I didn't know if all that was required. I thought last time they said we didn't have to go through as many formalities as we do the broader meeting, but I, I don't recall. So whatever the requirement is, I'd say yes, but if, but I thought it was a little different for these meetings, but I could be wrong. Cause like, we don't have public comment. I do know that like, that's not applicable to these meetings. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, oh, I'm trying to land a well, I'm guessing. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. The only reason why I asked is that it, it is on the agenda that we posted on the website. So okay. we may want to just do it because um, if anyone's following that agenda, they'll see those bullet points. But I can get yeah. clarity if that's something we need to, to do every time. Okay. So you said you'll, you're going to do the roll? The roll call? Um, or, sorry, I didn't understand what you were yeah, asking. That should get clarity on whether we need to... Okay, that. I thought she said, should I do that? So I oh, wasn't sure. I guess uh, my question is, is because that's not part of this agenda that's in the slide presentation, gotcha. but I didn't know if you guys wanted to to say that while this, this screen is up. Okay. So sorry about that. No worries, no worries. Okay, I'm going to start the Facebook Live now. Okay. Looks like so far outside of us, there's, we have Charlene and Kyle. Yep. William, so I don't have to multitask. Do you mind just doing the roll um, once we get started? Yeah, I'm just trying to get everything to pulled up here where I've got access to it. I didn't, I came straight from the office. And oh, gotcha, okay. Trying to access not, all these files where I can see it. Okay. If need be, I can probably jump on a base camp from my phone if, if necessary. Uh, oh boy. Okay. This Facebook live thing. Live on what? 
It looks like Kate joined as well, but as a showing up as an attendee instead of a panelist. Okay. I don't see her on the participants. We have Thomas. Hello. Let's see if we have. Okay. You have the list, William, or do you um, want me to refer to it? I want to make sure this has everybody, but I think it does. I'm trying to. Oh, get one of them. Just feel short. We'll get started in a few minutes. We're just still getting situated here, but we promise we will end on time. Yeah, if you've, if you've either got the um, the Excel sheet or, or something else where it's got everybody's name listed, I thought it was here on okay. Basecamp, but I'm not seeing it. All righty. Maybe while I'm, I'm looking at the um, invite list, I'm just going to pull from that, but it, it does seem like it may be missing a few people, but I, I, I could be wrong. Um, so, let me just look through. Yeah, um, I'm going to post it to the executive committee right okay. now because I don't have it well it's broken down by subcommittee but it's not okay. broken down by it's, it's not yeah so um well I have this breakdown so I can leverage that um I feel like it could be missing a person but we'll we'll we'll, we'll go with it um just for the sake of time um I'm just going to go through the list that we have on the line and then from there, if, if anyone else is present and you're not showing on Zoom for any reason, if you'll just chime in, let us know you're here. But we have uh, Mindy present, Helena present, Thomas present, yes, William present, uh, Charlene, yes. and Kyle. Is there anyone else on the line who is not showing in Zoom? Did you call out Kate? I don't see Kate on my listing. She's under it's attendees. It's showing panelist seven and attendees is showing her under there, so. Oh, okay, I found her. And I don't and know Kate, if she's muted on? or not. Kate, are you on? Uh, I think Kate as an attendee can't, um, may not be able to speak. So let me see how we move Kate to a panelist. Um, well, we will give this another minute. I do want to be sensitive and respectful of everyone's time. So uh, let's just give it another minute to see if we have any other attendees join and then we'll get started. I see Ruben also showed up as an attendee. So um, you said there's going to be limitations for them to speak if they're an attendees. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah. Um, We had this issue last time, but Jalissa was able to just transfer them over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were probably came in as attendees because they used the, the first link that was sent out instead of the one that went out today. Well, 
Well, when I used the one that was previously sent out, I got into this space. So I don't know if there's a. Hmm. Okay. Tom, was that you speaking? Um, that was me, um, Kyle. Okay, okay. It didn't for some reason. It didn't show me who was speaking. Okay. Okay. So this so Jackie is so Burton signed in as well as an attendee. Oh, geez. Where are you? Raven's in here twice, and Kate dropped off. Oh, okay. Attendees. Um, okay, got it. Figured it out. So promoted. And once Kate is back, I can uh, promote her as well. Okay. And who was the last person? Uh, what was her name? I did not catch that one. Jackie, I think Whoever it was. Whoever it was dropped off. Okay. I think it was Jackie. What's her name? I believe that's correct. Okay. All right, so we are, um, I'm just gonna call out um, who I don't see. And if you happen to be here, if you will just uh, let me know. Um, so German Bereta, German Bereta, Rudy Becerra, Rudy Becerra, And Charles Bowden. Then maybe Charlene. I see you, Charlene. I, I had you. So I've got you covered. What uh, about Kat me, Kate? Catherine Wall. Yep. Yes. I was just about to call your name. You just popped up. <laughs> yes. We're having I, some technical challenges. I, I used the link that was in Basecamp. Uh, the one that had the agenda, that's what I used because I think the email came through around 5.50. So I used the link that was in the base camp that had the agenda. Okay. Yeah. We will make sure we have this uh, cleaned up next time. Uh, so as we're all learning, appreciate you all's grace <laughs> through this all. And uh, is there anyone else that I may have missed? I think I've got everyone. I've got Charlene, Kyle, I've got you, Thomas, I've called you already. I think that's it, right? Okay, perfect. So, well, maybe we'll have a few more join us, but uh, first of all, welcome everyone. Uh, it's been a month since we have met before. Um, and we're gonna to try to accomplish a few things in this meeting. Uh, number one, we do have an agenda, but we also realize that it's probably a, an important time for us just to kind of reset on um, expectations and really just kind of spend a little bit of time of uh, recentering on where we should be at in the process. Uh, I, I will tell you, we are not far behind. Actually, we're not far behind at all. Um, but I do think we do need to spend some time on how we want to organize ourselves. I think last time we talked about splitting in the subcommittees, et cetera. But at the end of the day, we want to do what makes sense. And I think at that time, everyone agreed that that would be a good approach is break into hiring and retention. Um, but, you know, again, we realize people have day jobs, um, balancing family and just life in general. So we kind of just want to revisit and determine if that's the way we still want to go forward. And if so, um, you know, we will, William and I will look to um, regroup and then really get us moving forward. And then we can really talk about, um, you know, where we need to make some adjustments as well. And then just kind of reflect on where we're supposed to be in this process, which again, I think you'll be refreshed to know that we're actually pretty right on point. Um, and we'll talk about kind of what some of those next steps would look like. So uh, with that, I just thought I would just start with um, asking, did anyone have a chance to review the article that I sent out? And just it, would love to uh, hear your thoughts. To it. Yes, I Thomas, did. I oh, go ahead, Catherine. 
Yeah, I did. I actually read it and I thought it was very, I thought it was very informative, you know, walking up, talking about the workforce equity and about how we need to analyze the data, support and engage organization and yes. are creating a workplace culture. So I thought it was very informative and they had a lot of uh, what interventions that can be used uh, to, to increase workforce equity, so. Yeah, I, I, um, I had a chance to review it, uh, at least review it a little bit. And I was, the implicit, implicit bias was one that caught my attention, part of the, part of the paper. Great, thank you for that. Anyone else? Thomas? Uh, yes, I missed our last subcommittee meeting and I was, had another conflict that night, but, um, I did think that I had seen something since then that did suggest how we might split into the two sub subcommittees that you had referenced earlier, hiring and then retention. Um, and I thought in particular, the article was very good uh, at promoting some ideas that had been, uh, I guess, bubbling up in my head about retention, since that was the committee um, that I guess I chose after I saw how others had split themselves up. Um, and I think there's as much emphasis on retaining and op offering opportunity to people once they're on board as an employee of Brookhaven and um, paying as much attention to them. And I think the implicit bias issue is one where um, we can really start focusing on that for the retention side because it's a matter of giving everyone an equal voice and equal opportunity once they are on board and not letting any uh, unaware of biases, implicit biases, uh, bubbling up that deny that opportunity for folks. Absolutely, no, thank you for that. And, um, you know, I will say that when we met last time, Thomas, we spent time on the data that was sent out. So um, you may recall there was an email that had gone out, it had a lot of attachments. And the last call was, we spent a lot of time really, um, uh, Helena uh, was, 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 was on, on, on the spotlight and uh, we had a lot of questions for her as you can imagine. <laughs> and so uh, since then she has also provided us with additional data. So, um, you know, you haven't missed a ton but I would say that if you get a chance to go back if you haven't already to, re to watch the recording from the first one it may be helpful okay. because you can um, get okay. a sense of what type of questions that came up and also get a sense of what questions you think still need to be answered. I think with the article, um, I'll, I'll share as well. I think the thing that really, um, in addition to what you all said, I think the thing that I think was really important was that they had the data piece as the first thing, because you really have to understand the data um, and, and, and really challenge the data, um, which is actually where we spent a lot of the time last time, um, trying to really ask for more specifics so that as we begin to dig into this work, um, we feel like we're equipped with um, the necessary insights. So, um, you know, as I thought about kind of where we were in the journey right now, you know, what I would just say is if you have not spent a lot of time in the data as of yet, and again, we recognize we're all balancing just everything, so no worries. Um, but if you haven't had a chance to dig into the data, I encourage you to do so because that's gonna really be the power behind how we make, uh, what, me rep what recommendations we choose to bring forward. Um, so I just will just challenge everyone, if you have not had a chance to do so, I really I strongly, strongly encourage you to do so. Uh, we have, and we're gonna talk a little bit about how we wanna start managing things because I do realize that base camp is not for everybody. Um, we have found it to be a little challenging to get people to engage on it. Um, so that means we have to be agile and flexible with each other to figure out what, what makes sense for us. So we'll spend a little bit of time on that today as well. Um, and then Helena is going to provide us with a little bit of um, insight into the data that she has provided. Um, one thing I would just ask too is, is as we go through this meeting is think about things that you think, you know, as even as Helena does the additional updates on the data that she's provided, and it's also posted on Basecamp, is think about are there other questions? Are there other things that have come up after you read that article? Were there things that you thought to yourself, huh, you know, I wonder if we should be, 
you know, dig more into that, or that would be a good piece of data to grab. So just would ask you to put your, your hats on and, um, you know, speak up after she speaks and let us know what additional data you think she needs to provide. And then, like I said, we'll spend a little bit of time talking about next steps. So um, I don't recall who's um, advancing the slides, but if you could go to the agenda. Perfect. So we'll spend some time kind of reflecting on phase one and two, just to give you all comfort that um, even though we haven't had a lot of um, interaction since our last meeting, we've tried to leverage base camp, but you know, we technically are on track. So that's a good thing. <laughs> but, um, but I thought let's maybe use the front end of this instead of driving right into the data is really understanding what's gonna work better for you all. Do you like the, the thought of breaking into these work teams? Uh, you know, what we don't want to do is make this feel extra cumbersome. We know that there's a lot of meetings um, and there's a lot of work we still have to do, but we also want to make sure we're meeting you where you are too. So last time we said, yeah, that would be a great idea, but maybe it's not a great idea anymore. Maybe it's just best that we all look at the data together and stay on, you know, stay as one team. And that's fine if that's the preference. Um, would also just love any feedback on your preferences in how you want to collaborate. So again, Basecamp was, was designed to not only be a repository so that everything is in one place and to make it easy to refer to things, but it also was um, uh, intended to be a, a way to collaborate with one another, share information so that everything doesn't have to be a meeting. So you could ask questions in Basecamp, you could, um, you know, we could share ideas with one another in Basecamp and all of that. Outside of that, if we do decide to do meetings, we do have to actually have a public meeting. We do have to make sure that there is 24 advance uh, notice and an agenda, which has to be posted. So I just wanna kind of share those nuances. However, if we do communicate email or if we do communicate via base camp, those are just ideas and exchanges. So I just wanna put that out there um, just as thoughts, but I wanna hear from you all on how do you all what would work best for you so that we can begin to dig into this work um, on the data? So who wants to go first? I'll go fast. I'll go fast. Um, okay. Initially, I thought I was getting a little bit overwhelmed by Basecamp, you know, because I was getting all these emails, but then I went and downloaded the app. So when I downloaded the app, I found it much easier to manage the information, you know, like all okay. the documents are in there. So I just go to what I'm assigned, which is hiring and retention, and I'm able to read and see what my requirement is. So I can say that since I downloaded the app, I found it much easier to manage and very easy to communicate and use it. And what about your thoughts on um, the sub, the work teams? Do you like the thought of doing it the way we did? Do you think it would be better to just stay as one? And do you have any preference on um, ways to collaborate? Do you prefer the Zoom meetings, um, or, or would you would you like us to use email, or would you kind of lean towards Basecamp as a way to collaborate in between meetings? I would lean to base camp because I'm, I mean, I have a daughter, I get communication from school, she plays sports. So if we use email, I think it, it may end up like missing some e uh, some communication. I find base camp is the one place that I know I can go to. And in regards to if we should all work together in retaining or hiring, I am open to what the majority group goes with. I don't have any particular preference. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, thank you, um, Tawana, for bringing this forward. I, I think that there, in the beginning of our base camp um, process, were just a lot of e a lot of emails that came out because we were being pinged, but there wasn't anything actionable. I thought that needed to be done. So it was like, what are the things? Like, what are these pings um, that are occurring? Um, I also found out that you can reply through email back to Basecamp. Um, so I think that has been helpful because I will be honest, I have so many apps on my phone that I am managing that another social media type app is just gonna be a lot for me to, to deal with. Um, okay. but I think that the ability to figure out, you know, if there's an actionable thing um, that maybe that might be a way to kind of say, 
you know, and I think that I did see it. We missed a meeting. I don't check email on the weekend. I just, I do email Monday through Friday because I'm so engrossed in it. Um, that yeah, anything that comes to you. the weekend, <laughs> yeah, anything that comes to the weekend, I'm like, I am not like, that's my time. I, I check out. Um, I respect that. So um, I think just trying to ensure that, you know, you know, if it's an actionable, I don't know what the assignments thing does, if it lets you know um, that you have a task that you have to do in base camp. I don't know if there's a way to figure that out. Um, yeah. But I think that is, you know, as we're learning anything new, I think that's something that is um, important also to look at. I also am a fan, I think um, when we met last month um, to, to break it into subgroups, I think that there's so much that happens and so many different things and ideas that the ability to have two or three people figure out something and then um, bring it forward. I know that's probably an additional meeting um, or additional time of communicating, um, but I just think about when we have seven different voices on a call in an hour to get through something, I just don't think that it's gonna be a great use of time to get things moving. Um, okay. So I think that is something that I think about um, when it comes to time and being cautious of that. So those are my three cents. Um, I gave you an extra one. No, I appreciate that. Thank you so much for your candor. Really appreciate it. Um, I, to be honest with you, I haven't had time to dwell into the data yet or use Basecamp, I've been so overwhelmed. I did try to read that article that you sent out uh, a couple of days ago, I thought that was mm -hmm. important. Uh, we'll, I'll eventually get to that and start getting uh, again to the data. I think it's important, I think, to break out on different groups and to retention, hiring retention, I think you'll make it maybe easier to manage all of this data and um, okay. being able to uh, maybe better, you know, use our time a little bit better. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, Ruben. Anyone else? Yeah, I kind of piggyback off of Kyle. This is Charlene. Um, I, when I started getting pinged, I was getting pinged on Basecamp and poked on Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know how to respond. What do I do? So um, poking and pinging doesn't work for me very well. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I do, I, I actually do better with email because I can look at it in real time, review it in real time, or I have ways that I categorize and put things in folders. And so I have an email system in place. So I, I don't struggle with, with, um, with email. I also like the smaller um, groups. I think they're, I think less is best sometimes as it pertains to getting things accomplished and getting things done. So I would prefer, I'm not suggesting this, but I would prefer one or two quick 30 minute breakout meetings with a couple of people and knocking some things out versus um, an hour with um, not being quite as effective as it would be in a shorter meeting. So, and I, I desire the connection and the interaction that's important to me. Um, and I was thinking about that question on Basecamp. I think you asked the question uh, one day recently, and I was thinking, so what would we have done if we could meet in person? You know, what would be mm. the platform that we would use? How would we communicate? How would we break out? And all of those things. And, and so I think that that's where that, wow, I really would like to touch people more often and have dialogue and kind of the back and forth on some things. So. Um, yes, yeah, so again, pinging and poking, no, <laughs> that doesn't work for me. Um, emails are fine for me. Um, and small one, two, three, well, two, three, four people, I'm good with that also. Okay, perfect. And I will say too, as a suggestion, Charlene, and we can take this offline, I do know there is a way. So let's just say the majority want to kind of give this base camp a try because I know there's everybody's still trying to get comfortable with it. There is a way where you can um, update your settings. So if you don't want to get the pings and you just want it to go to your email, you could actually leverage it that way. So that way, when you're checking your email and you click on it, it takes you to exactly to the location in base camp. Okay. We have not, we have not tried the, um, uh, what is uh, Kyle, you said it, um, the, I think it's like the task list or what have you as of yet. Yeah, the assignments, but I was also Thank you. Saying, um, it, I when I'm pinged, I think to, to Charlene's point, I just reply to the ping with anything. Ah. 
And then when, if you just reply through, because it sends you an email, if you reply to that email, it responds back to Basecamp. So I think that's for me is how I've used it. Um, but yeah, the, okay. pinging, the pinging and poking, I'm with Charlene on that. But yeah, the assignment okay. is what it was, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so maybe we'll, um, William and I'll, and we may just spend some time testing out a couple things behind the scenes. Uh, we'll try to do that in the next couple of days so we can try to get some things moving along. Definitely great suggestions. And I would just say, it seems like, I know we, um, a couple other voices we, we may need to hear, um, but I, Tom, I saw that you said you agree. So I think that was about the breaking down the teams and keeping them as they were. Yes. Um, and I think that with that, those small teams, so Mindy put in the chat, I don't know if you all saw that, that the policing subcommittee, they meet every other week. So maybe we can, you know, William has the kind of the hiring aspect and I took retention. Um, so if that works for you all, we could, you know, use base camp still to collaborate, share information assignments, but then maybe have a shorter meeting, like a 30 minute with just the sub team. Um, and, and Charlene, I know that would exceed your two to three people, but there's only uh, five people on the committee. So we'll just we'll just pull them in, but it would just be specific to the retention team. Um, and so we'll, we'll try to leverage that. We'll play with, around with some things and uh, try to streamline as much as possible and be as efficient um, with Basecamp. So we're, I'm still learning it as well, to be quite candid. I've never used Basecamp before. Um, but we're, we're happy to try some new things and we'll try the assignment task and see how that works. Um, and in the meantime, I think with, with that, we know, I mean, the good thing is the committees are small. So if we find that, you know, only three out of five are communicating, you know, we'll just have to decide like, gosh, well, it's probably just best to go ahead and quickly send an email and, and so be it. So we'll, we'll figure it out and we'll play around with some things, but this is all helpful. Um, did anyone else have um, any thoughts or preferences Okay, and I do just wanna remind everybody, this particular meeting is actually um, typically not intended to solve anything. It actually is intended to come together as a committee to really just provide key updates. So I do just wanna make sure I clarify, clarify that piece. Um, so let's go to the next slide and maybe let's just review kind of where we are based on the phase one and phase two uh, suggestions that were given to us from uh, Chrysalis Labs. So I hope she doesn't mind that I hijacked uh, and did a screenshot of her slides, <laughs> but uh, I did, I admit it. Uh, so March and April, you know, and I put in green, I tried to use kind of a little bit of a project management mindset. So those things were done. So, you know, we got the current policies and practices for the city of Brookhaven, as well as other data. Um, and then we work with uh, Helena uh, and others just to make sure that we had all the information that we could get at least at the start. So I would say that those two things that we 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 started and we and we and we did that. And then in April, you all recall that we had a meeting and we asked for additional data, which that data has now been provided. So um, doesn't mean that we won't we won't ask for more or that we have all that we need, but at least from a standpoint of what the expectations were from March through April, we've we definitely have have met that. And then if we can go to the next slide. And so this is where we're at now. So we're in May and it talks about using the data to identify inequities. And this means digging into that data. And that's why I have a strongly suggestion that if you haven't had a chance to really spend much time with it, I know it seems like a lot, but actually when you start going through the data, it, some of them are really short pieces of data. It's not, they're not long reads. Um, so I would just ask that you, you either review it or even re-review it. And, um, and we haven't started that process. So you, you haven't missed anything that will be up to us to, to your point, Kyle, make sure that that's very clear as an assignment. And one thing I do have a question about, and Mindy, I don't know if you're able to answer this or anyone else, but one of the things that we were asked to do was to use um, what's called a 4P assessment tool. And I apologize if I have missed this, but um, do we have that tool available or, or is it in the documents and I just overlooked it? Yes, I believe it is uploaded to the executive committee base camp page. And I'm going to double check okay. right now because I don't want to be okay. wrong. But that was something, so in full transparency, that was something that we introduced at the executive committee, you know, the co chair orientation. 
and and as your as your liaisons and guides, I do think it's something that we need to refresh and and just make sure it's top of mind and make sure that that's something that you're really using. And so, um, for for the meeting this month, which the timing, you know, because it's at the end of the month, is off. Um, but I think the saving grace here is that you all are still sort of sifting through the data. And so it might set us back a, a little bit, um, but more time to look at the data. <laughs> but you do <laughs> have it and I will make sure that um, it's, well, I'll, I'll make sure that it's in there. Okay. And then what we'll do is make sure that when we put the uh, assignment up, if you will, is put what the specific task is, like what is it that we want everybody to look at? Because again, I know we'll have our breakout teams, but um, you know, making sure that everybody's kind of bringing their questions, thinking about what else, what else? Um, and so that way, when we do have that first kind of breakout meeting, uh, you know, that shorter meeting, if you will, everyone will have reviewed the data, come with their own set of ideas uh, or additional data points that they may need um, for us to talk about as a, as a smaller work team. And then we can decide, do we have what we need? And then we can go into, you know, other aspects of the work and starting to go into that assessment tool, um, you know, or reset on anything. So we'll, we will um, get the tool out and make that part of the assignment. And I will get with William this week and we will um, regroup a little bit and then make sure we, again, we leverage the assignment task. And I do think that once we start getting that going and, and get some consistency with that, uh, it'll start to feel like we're, we're, we're moving. So, oh, I see your note here, Mindy, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Perfect. Everybody taking a deep breath now and realizing we're actually, even though we haven't had a lot of meetings, we're actually not that far behind. I know I don't like to be behind. I don't know about you all, but <laughs> but it feels good to know that we're on track. Um, like I said, we're all just trying to get familiar with this process and this journey. So, um, and, and we're gonna do it together, right? So thanks for all the uh, input and, and candor tonight. It's really, really helpful. All righty. Well, if no questions on these two slides or clarity needed, then what I'd like to do is, uh, even though the data is on Basecamp, we're going to kind of take a similar approach as last time. And Helena is with us, and she's going to provide an overview of the data that was uploaded. And uh, again, just like before, if you have questions uh, about anything that she is um, covering, Helena, I would probably just ask that you pause after each slide and just you know, see if there's any questions and that way we can attack each slide as, as you show them and then um, and we'll go from there. Sounds good. Um, so I broke these up uh, by um, the kind of the hiring and retention and stuff like that. And um, just so you guys are aware for reference that was uploaded into Basecamp on the 23rd um, of April. So if you're searching by a date, um, that is uh, where it is, but I did create two folders, one in, it's called hiring and the other one in retention um, uh, for the data. Um, so if you are looking for um, the data and you're not seeing it in your assigned folder, it's, it's probably in the other folder. Um, a couple of items, it could have went in either one. So um, uh, we just put it uploaded in one, but um, knowing that all the data is up there. Um, yeah, and it would be, uh, just to clarify, it's in the documents and files if you go into Basecamp. Uh, it's in the documents and files. And you, like she said, it's labeled hiring and the other one is labeled retention. Um, so in the hiring, um, uh, you guys asked for um, some samples of interview questions. Um, so we, uh, I've uploaded a, a few samples, uh, the assistant city manager, CFO, a police officer, accounting clerk, finance director. Uh, so those um, interview uh, sample questions have been uploaded into the system. How, what, do you recall the last time that the um, interview questions or interview guide was updated? Um, the interview questions are reviewed um, uh, every time uh, like a position comes open. Um, 
to um, uh, see if there are uh, any um, maybe processes have changed or there might be a new um, product or program that's being utilized that they um, want to see if someone has um, experience in. So those are reviewed um, as we're um, recruiting a new, a new cycle. Um, I'll say for the police officer position, because it, um, I, I feel like uh, with that role, we can we can sometimes be recruiting uh, more often uh, during the year. We usually review those once a year. Okay. I had Any a other quick, questions? Yeah, I had a quick question. As I'm looking at the police officer questions, mm -hmm. um, there there's a question that asks if there's a write-up or reprimand in the police file. Is that not something, I know that there's a big push right now um, to try and figure out how uh, we are capturing that information across not only cities, but states. Is there another way that that is verified besides just asking the question? Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, we do do a uh, file review. So if a candidate gets to the point of a conditional offer, um, we do go to the agency and we go to previous agencies and, and pull that file or do an open records request for the file to obtain that data to verify. Thank you. Any other questions? I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, is it also part of standard procedure that um, you always get three references or something like that before a higher offer is made? Um, it, it's not standard practice. Um, we usually uh, do more with the background. It's more employment education verifications. I was just thinking there's a lot more to the process and simply the questions you ask in an interview. So. So today, just to maybe piggyback on what Tom just asked, so is, the, is that done at all or is it done sometimes or is it never done as far as like reference checks, like personal references? Um, so references are done as part of the police officer process and the application process, but um, for the rest of the positions, we, um, we do not do a, a reference check. We do um, uh, previous employment and education checks. Okay. Hmm. That's surprising. Yeah. I often wonder in some of these instances because of the fact that um, I'm thinking about um, not trying to pick on the police officer, but the police officer. And then I think there was another um, for the um, public servant, I think it was, that he was in here. Am I correct in that? I was looking at the questions. Um, is there a process where they are kind of in a group setting interacting with people? Um, has that ever been thought about um, and, and incorporating that kind of part as part of the hiring process? Um, because I think that a lot of times we can do good with questions, but how are we doing with, with it within group settings? And I know that's hard via Zoom, um, but in, in group settings, has that ever been thought about? Um, can you clarify what you mean by group settings? Yeah, so uh, sometimes when we hire, um, um, this is from educational background, but when we hire um, individuals who work with other people, we like to see how they engage in group settings. So we will give them a task where they're doing something as a group um, to determine leadership and observe their skills um, and how they interact with others. Um, that also sometimes can lead lean into how they might deal with others who are who have a different personality and are different experiences. Um, there may be conflict that arises within a group because for, on purpose you may not give them all the tools that they need, but figuring out how they might navigate through like that space um, can sometimes provide some other experiences that may not always be able to be thought about through a um, just straight list of questions that are answered. Um, we currently do not do something like that. Yes, Tom? Uh, um, sorry to get hung up on this one slide, but um, like Dr. Williams was saying, I think the um, having a fairly consistent, rigorous process for hiring, as well as retention when we get to those, is important for every single position. And one of the ways that um, we often, I've hired probably hundreds of people at my former job for 33 years. And 
did pretty well with most of them. But one of the key questions, uh, as Kyle was saying, was really how well do they work with others? You know, not just with our clients, but with each other, with consultants, with um, people below and above them. And that's one of the things that often comes out by making sure we always checked at least two or three references um, from their past experience and employment opportunities. Did they work well with other people and how did they interact as a team member? Um, so yeah, you can get into more questions and more validation of that, uh, not just by asking the applicant, but also finding out their past work experience references. Anyway, I just wanted to piggyback on what he said. Catherine? Um, I do I do a lot of uh, consulting contract work. Uh, I've not worked for a full-time company for the last 10 years. And I can say for the last couple of years, I've never, hardly any company has ever requested for references. You know, I guess I just go with my reference from whichever, I mean, uh, my work history and my background, I've hardly had anyone ask me for any references. And the ones that I've asked, which are very few, they've not called. They've not called the people who have given their references. And I think it's because maybe some companies are concerned that if someone gives a negative uh, review, a, a negative recommendation, then it gets back and it just creates a lot of animosity so i can say from my experience i've not been asked by companies and i've worked for quite a lot of companies recently none of them has ever asked me for references so i don't know whether it's something that is changing in terms of the work employment so i just wanted to add that point And I think as as the hiring and the retention teams begin their work and, you know, we start to think about what recommendations based on the data that we collect, I think that's where some of these suggestions can come in. Are there some questions that would be a great opportunity uh, to enhance the current set of questions that exist, et cetera? So I definitely say hold that thought, especially on the hiring uh, team. Um, because that's likely a, a great suggestion, whether it's reference checks or whether it's just whatever question is asked. I think that definitely hold those thoughts. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next slide unless there are any other questions. Um, and then this is, um, I uh, presented a, um, a breakdown. Um, uh, the question was asked of what the diversity looked like for an interview panel. Um, so this is a police officer interview uh, panel um, data since the majority of our um, positions um, are uh, over there in um, at, at our, our, our largest position that we recruit for is our police officer. I, I'm trying to understand the numbers. They don't add up to a hundred. So I'm just curious as to the breakdown. I think it had a little bit to do with the, the, the rounding. Um, so we had, a, this is based on a, um, a initial interview panel of three. Okay. Okay, so if there's, so I'm just, just to break this down. So if there's an interview panel of three, I don't know how to, so I'm trying to make sure I frame my question correctly. <laughs> um, is that, the, let me ask this, is that typically the number of people who are part of the panel for the police officers? For the initial interview, yes. Okay. And those three people, that would typically what be considered what you all call a panel? Uh, those, yeah, that three would be considered the initial panel. Okay. And it seems like it's very heavily male out of those three. So you have one, one female that was either this, you know, one of the demographics. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is it also a three person panel um, for other positions other than police officers? It's usually a three person panel, yes, for that initial interview. 
do they interview as a panel or is it individual interviews? It's an interview as a panel. Okay. Okay. I see Catherine's hand up, so I wanted to acknowledge that. Oh, no, I already, oh, that was initially, oh, sorry, I should have lowered it. Sorry about that. <laughs> sorry uh, about that. I just wanted to make sure that I recognize that before I ask my other question. Okay, um, have we ever, and this might be, I'm just asking, have we ever thought about asking, um, I know if we have police officers that are there, but are there other individuals that can be incorporated into the panel? Um, thinking like a civic worker or someone else to kind of help um, with the hiring process of the police officer or is it just um, police officer? That is currently not being utilized, um, but, it, but it's something that could be possibly explored. Okay. I'm just thinking about, you know, if, if we have, um, let's say, I'll pick, I'll pick us, for example, because we're in the committee. Um, individuals from this committee that may, you know, if we were talking about you do a panel of with officers and you do a panel kind of with um, civilians who are, are affiliated with the city, then that can kind of help. Um, it is like it can just kind of provide some other information, um, mm -hmm. things that you might have witnessed or observed through questions that we provided that can also be taken into consideration. Yeah, I would say that the closest right now to a civilian uh, position would be with the HR person sitting on every interview, they would be considered that civilian position. Anything else before I move to the next slide? Helena, so of the three uh, people on the panel, um, is the HR representative considered one of the panelists or is that a fourth individual? It's considered one of the panelists. So are the other two um, panelists from the police department? They are, Or yes. from whatever department that would be interviewing the individual? That is correct. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next slide here. Um, the uh, additional uh, data was requested um, by department and um, asked to include the generation groups. So um, that information is updated into Basecamp for you guys to uh, review, um, as well as uh, the information of what is the um, uh, data demographics uh, um, for manager of people, as well as uh, managers of data. The org chart was requested, um, as so that copy has been uploaded into Basecamp as well as uh, the data was added to the slide. Um, that uh, org chart was um, as of the positions um, as of December uh, 2020. So um, that is uh, when, um, uh, if you're looking at the data, um, that is uh, when all of those um, uh, the positions were captured. It was uh, as of uh, December 2020. And then um, you guys asked for some turnover reasons. Um, and then here is a list of some of the um, reasons uh, if someone did decide to share uh, during an exit process of some of the reasons that they may have ch chose to leave the organization. Do you have any, it, it broken down by chance? And it, it sounds like it may be all manual, so it may be tough to, to, to aggregate the data, but I was just curious if you have it, like, was it 5% that, you know, left for benefits and, you know, that type of thing? Did you have a, a more specific breakdown or were these just the more common trends? Um, these were the more common trends that we were seeing. And that, that's managed manually? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. I put a question in the chat. Do we have turnover by department? Um, I can look at pulling that data for you. It might highlight if there's a particular issue with a particular department that has high turnover. And it could be because of the type of job it is or perhaps something wrong with the management or whatever policies maybe. 
Yeah, I think we covered that a little bit in the first meeting. Um, okay. Tyler, what would appear to be relatively high turnover in the police department, um, but you have to compare that data with other um, police departments. Apparently, ours is pretty low compare, comparatively. Right. I'm just curious too, Helena, do you all, um, and this may be something that ends up being like a, a subcommittee conversation, but just curious, you know, cause I think it touches what I'm about to say, I think touches hiring and I think it also touches retention, which is involving the people who do the job. So do you all ever have like uh, work groups where maybe you are trying to improve a process to engage the people um, in like a, a, a PD role on you know any sort of like hey we're updating this and you know in this process really because most of our staff are PD we want to make sure you all are involved in this process is that something that you all typically do when you are revising practices or or, or policies? Um, we we have done that and before um, for instance when we were looking at. Um, uh, updating our uh, PTO um, accrual policy. Um, we put together a team that represented um, several different departments to review that. Okay. I, I have a question uh, regarding the managers of people. When I look at the data, it looked like you have female 16.28% and male 83.72%. And I was wondering, are the men more likely because like when I look at the managers of processing, it looks like they're about the, they're about the same. Is there a reason that we have such a low percentage for women in the managers of people? Um, I would need to look into that for you. Okay. Well, I was just wondering if the managers of processes, whether, you know, why, if women are being promoted to manage processes, why it's not the same with the managers of people? So just was curious about it. Okay. Thank you. And remind me, Helena, did, I don't, I'm, because I'm on this, I can't, I can't switch to the other screen, but did, did, did it also cover like promotional opportunities for staff? So from, from one, I don't know if that if you have that data, but was that part of what you provided? And if not, is that something you could um, could could provide? So I didn't um, initially provide that. So you're you're looking for kind of promotional um, data of mm -hmm. of possible promotions um, mm -hmm. uh, within the city. That that's something I can look into. Yeah, that would be great especially by race and by gender. I mean, all that's very, very helpful. Generation, all, all, all the things. Okay. Yeah. I can, I can look, at the, look at that data. Okay. That would be great. And I think this is your last slide, correct? It is, it is. Okay. okay. Helena, um, after a reading, uh, our suggested reading uh, from yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that came up that I hadn't really thought about before is I know we've got a fair amount of data um, that's been given to us regarding demographics. When are y'all first and how are y'all obtaining the demographical information regarding race, gender, that sort of thing? If, if someone decides to self-disclose during the application process, we'll get that data there, but they're, they're not required. Um, so sometimes we do not get that data until they are actually um, hired as an employee. And so does that mean there's nothing in the ap application documents that have any of that demographic information for them to indicate there? Or are you saying that it is there, but not required for them to answer? Yeah, the, the information is provided to them, but they don't they don't have to answer that during the um, application process. They, they can choose to, to just not answer it. Can we get a copy of the application? 
Sure. Is there a standard? Okay, that would be great to have too. And you said you all use an applicant tracking system, is that correct? We do, yes. Okay. And remind me, who's the, who do you all use again? Is it Paycom? Um, we use Paycom. Paycom, okay. Okay. William, did I miss anything? I don't think so. And we're right here before the before the end of the hour. Okay. Any final questions from the group? All right, let me just All right if there's not any questions, uh, it's one and I will uh, definitely get together after this and um, discuss with both the hiring and retention uh, sub teams how we want to go forward with uh, putting together there's some specific issues and assignments and then she and I will both uh, reach out to our respective team members to try to get the ball rolling on that. Okay. Sounds good. Perfect. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank Stay you. dry. <laughs> yes. Not everyone. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.